Well, hi, I'm Diana Montford, the world's first, yes, first, transgender television journalist. And maybe so far the only one. Maybe there's a reason for that, I don't know. But my guests are uh, Andrea De Angelis and Mark Purnell, who comprise the band Makar. They sing, they, uh, they do a lot of interesting things, and they're going to tell us all about it. They're going to sing some songs for us, play some of their wonderful music. I believe they write most of their music. And we're going to talk about uh, just the band experience and what that is. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for having us on your show. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, now, where did the name Makar come from? Well, it was pretty random. We were trying to think of band names, and I was going through a dictionary because I like to read the dictionary mm -hmm. because that's the kind of person I am. And um, well, you're also a writer. Yeah, I'm a writer, but I like a published poet. But oh, wonderful! You're a published poet. Yes. Good. I actually got paid 25 bucks for a poem. That is great. That's great. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of, <laughs> I, I, you're the only published paid poet. I know, I know a lot of poets, <laughs> but you are the only paid published one I know. And, and a short story writer. And short so, story, yeah. yeah. But, but um, so we, I, you know, I found this name, Makar, and I was calling out other names, and Mark liked that one, and it means poet of the dark ages. And it's mm -hmm. Scottish, though nobody in the band has ever been Scottish. Right? No, Nildes you're, was never you're Welsh. I'm, well, yeah, I'm like quarter as Welsh. Close as we got. That's as close as we got. Yeah. But I'm a quarter Scottish, but I'm not in your band, so no. it doesn't count. No. <laughs> you could be an honorary. Oh, okay. Do you, do you play know. drums or? Oh, I can be like uh, Michelle Phillips in the Mamas and the Papa. She used to hit a tambourine. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, but th but that's where it came from, and it stuck. And you know, we we love the name. We love the name so much is that that we actually trademarked it mm -hmm. for a band so sure. I mean, it just yeah. became a registered trademark yeah. a month ago a month ago so yeah it took so a while. It took well a you while. know the names marilyn monroe and norma jean are copyrighted they're trademarked oh wow so but you know you, you kind of have to do it it's crazy but other otherwise you have a would have done all this work and you have this affinity for this name and all your you know music is out on under this name and then somebody could come along and steal it from you yeah. Yeah. and say you have to redo all your Remanufacture albums, redo mm -hmm. everything, re you know. So that was one of the first things that we did. Yeah, it was one of the yeah. first kind of like, I mean, as we're well very. As copyright the music, music and yeah. just yeah. protect what we Well, thought. so many people yeah. think that musicians are very casual about reality. Now, you went to mm -hmm. Dartmouth and you went to Oberlin. So, I mean, now people don't expect that from musicians. You may have noticed this. Yeah, they, they well, they, they don't. They, they expect very strange things like. We were auditioning somebody who actually became our drummer, but um, remember the Listerine tabs, that the, the gum tabs that they have. Yes. So we gave him one of those, and his wife thought it was we were giving him acid. That's what they it's expect. Fresh breath. Fre and fresh she breath. Thought it was acid. It's like gum. It's like a different form of gum. And we gum. don't give acid away. It's too <laughs> expensive. <laughs> but, but Thank you. <laughs> yeah. but, but what they he expect. He was an architect, um, and he had gone to Columbia. So yeah. a lot of people who play music, we had, an, we knew another guy who was a doctor. He was a mm -hmm. drummer. Yeah, in um, their band. You yeah. have to be pretty smart. We to have play a director music. here at uh, MNN who is in Columbia as we speak and won three Emmys. Wow. Yeah, I mean you. Fantastic. Yeah, but to but to understand music theory and there's a, there's a mathematical relationship to all of that. You generally have to be pretty well educated. Um, you know. Well, you know music theory. I don't know any of that. Well, but okay, yeah, but, but you know. So I mean, generally, I think it's a lot of the antics that go on. Well, you yeah. actually majored in music theory. I, I minored, yeah, minored oh, in yeah. it. So, but I, I took it since like the second grade. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's I, I think it's more for the personalities. You know, you, you get these crazy musicians and there's a lot of drugs, but I mean, the does that still go on, or has it settled down? Is it still? Although Mick Jagger was studying to be an accountant. Yeah. Yeah, he was in the London School of Economics. Yeah. Um, but I mean, can you really be like a total screw up and be a competent musician? I don't think you That's can. That's generally when musicians um, their careers end. I mean, like Jimi Hendrix. Um, yeah. All these great musicians who got hooked on drugs and then they died and. Their best music was was maybe made on drugs when they started, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not where they came. I mean, from. look I at mean, look at Sid Barrett. He was yeah. amazing. Exactly, he's amazing, amazing. The way he looked changed so hard. Oh my god! Yeah. And it's just he's yeah. amazing. He's, he's the fa he's my favorite part of Pink Floyd. Like I love Pink Floyd. Well, I say it's a, a whole other. It's all man. Since he left, right? Yeah. And but but it just was 
it was so sad because he ju he just went too far. And I mean, mm -hmm. I can't even have a beer before I perform. I, I agree, yeah. one thousand yeah. percent. Yeah, I mean, it's and you know, it, it just it diminishes but the, but it too. But musicians actually, some musicians still believe that you won't make good music if you don't do drugs. Well, poor yeah. Jonas Joplin used to oh. tipple from a bottle of Southern Comfort, and I don't know if. She she really did, but she certainly seemed to be. She was swinging around and... Well, singing, singing and drinking can kind of work, but playing, singing and drinking, Impossible, that is no yeah. way. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, just, yeah. just, just like the nervousness of performing is freaky. But enough, some like, people can yeah. do it. Some people can do it. Some people can do it. I can't do it. I can't like, Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, so I, I do think people are more serious today, but then, you know, I don't know. I don't know if people are more serious about it. They're just more at, they, they have to do more things themselves than ever before. People don't have managers. Well, yeah, yeah. that's something, now the music business, now if this were like 50 years ago, mm. someone would hear you, would say you're great, I want to sign you, you like, Ahmed Ertogan, was that his name? Mm -hmm. He would just take over your lives. Mm. You'd be number one on WABC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I, but that Pop doesn't edition. happen anymore. Um, it happens, but it happens through viral videos. Um, if you look at someone like Justin Bieber, you know he yeah. put a viral video on there and he became a huge star. Um, there were a couple of kids who were playing in New York. They were playing heavy metal in the street. Suddenly, they're getting millions of views. They're, they're signed amazing. to Columbia Records, yeah. but now they're now they're stuck in litigation because. The company doesn't know how to brand them. They spent um, six <laughs> hours trying to brand. These are like twelve and thirteen year old virtuosos, awesome yeah. like kids playing yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. But it's instrumental, and they're like, "Well, how do we brand this? Who cares? They're an internet sensation. Put yeah. them on tour. Put a yeah. record out. It's not going to cost you that much. Yeah. Get it together." And now but, it's two yeah. years later, so they've lost all that steam. Right. And, and they're in their they've lost some of their passion. Kids. It's not unlike yeah. what happens to an actress in film or the stage. Well, is she? The whore type or the lady type or mm -hmm. you don't have to be this or that. But you, know? you do in, in the music business because when they sell you, they've got to sell you in a certain slot. Like Right, you because there's a certain audience for each type of music. Exactly. So yeah. like with us, it's hard to quantify us because we do everything. We're like an amalgamation yeah. of sounds. Yeah, but uh, as I was saying 50 mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. there were only so many stations. Yeah. Music blanketed the land. Mm -hmm. Both accountants and rock musicians knew who Mick Jagger was. Yeah. yeah. Today yeah. it's very diversified. There's so many well, people doing it. There's so many people <laughs> doing it, but, me. but yeah. Clear Channel also owns all like the m Commercial you know major radio. radio. Yeah. So even DJs who are great DJs, they're basically told what they're what they can play, and they're yeah. given a very like they get seven songs and then they have like seven commercials, and they're even even like recorded voices mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. for DJs. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very limited. The only Places that I mean, we've never gotten played on commercial radio. We've gotten played all over um, independent radio, mm -hmm. and college radio, and community radio, and internet not, not radio. Not without payola, and that still exists. Payola. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we discussed that over the telephone. Yeah. I was shocked yeah. at that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not mob run anymore, but but it, Franz Fernahan paid for pay, had payola. I mean, they didn't pay, but their management team paid. That's it was in the newspaper. I mean, so you think of a current example. I don't know other. I. I stopped paying attention after, right. <laughs> but it was it was kind of shocking, you know. Yeah, they're still not giving them favors, and Shania Twain's I think her first hit was cost like a one point five million dollars. I mean to get who maybe paid it? She didn't have no, it. no the label, the label. Label right. So if you're not in a label, you're not going to get a commercial that's radio. That's terrible. And it's, it's yeah. not supposed to be like that. But no, it's, it's, it's yeah. really not. But it, what it's done is it's it's grown a huge industry of independent musicians and independent radio stations and college radio stations, and we're supported by like a lot of people. It's yeah. a huge. Mm -hmm community so I mean, we're actually kind of happier about that because they're yeah. they're not as many concessions well that's the thing you're a star <laughs> in your field and in your yeah. with your audience your stars in your with yeah. the uh, so I mean there are a lot of ways to be a star you yeah know? and we're played all over the world so I mean you know we don't even have to tour anymore I mean you can do live shows on I mean, right. yeah I mean we've been at CB tell us some of the fabulous clubs you well we play a CBGB gallery and that was just there there is wonderful woman Micheline I remember her name because it's my grandmother's name because she was really gruff but I remember always you always had to call the bookers like you used to have to call people and of course I always had to call them because Mark's like that's your job <laughs> and, and it was like oh so can we have show yeah what do you want you know but she was just but she was but when you met her she was a sweetheart that was a wonderful place to play why did like, it close it was well so because because I think um the owner just got tired and also because he was he was much older but he was offered, I think, money to move to Las well, Vegas, and 
set up the name. I think there's some kind of CBGBs at Los But also the, the place above them kicked them oh, out. That's right, yeah, that's and right. it was some kind of social works place or something. It actually like was a homeless shelter yeah. above. You CBGBs. think I'd be thrilled to have <laughs> great music? Yeah. Yeah, but now, do you know what it is now? It's like, what is it, John Bar Barbatos? It's Barbatos. It's a clothing store. We walked by it yeah. and we walked in there and I actually just physically felt ill. I was like so yeah. ill. No, nothing against John Farber. No, no, no. But I just mean, he's actually got very cool. No, it's cool. And he, and he still has this rock vibe in there. He's, yeah. he's preserved a lot of the walls and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was but just it's it was it was hard because <laughs> you know that different. was a very important place. Luna Lounge is great. Yeah. That guy was that guy is wonderful. He still runs Rob Rob Sacker, like mm. runs um, um, a place ra a satellite lounge, but it's not a live venue. But he was yeah. you know Elliot Smith played there, mm -hmm. and and what was great about Luna Lounge is he would give you a crap night. And it, it would be, he wouldn't expect you to bring a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But people who, people didn't have to pay. There was no, you didn't have to pay to go listen to the band. So if you were in the bar, you could hear the band. Right. Though actually I think mm -hmm. maybe you didn't pay. But in a bar, you could hear the band. So people sitting there could hear you play, if, even if they didn't come mm -hmm. into the room. But it was a one, that was a place we played a couple times. That was mm -hmm. a great place. Mm -hmm. I miss that place. Yeah, the Knitting Factory, Pianos, That's um, great. Yeah. The Hook. A lot of these places are gone, too. Uh, the yeah, the gone. Hook's gone. It, it, yeah. Did they um, say it's because people stay home and listen to the Internet? Is that true? Um, that's not the reason. I think the reason is the tripling of the of rents. rents. The, the rents, rents just go sky A lot of places have moved to Brooklyn, which is good. Yeah, I mean, and if you go to lower But even Brooklyn has been outpriced. Yeah. yeah. Has outpriced a yeah. lot. Yeah, but I mean, the living room's gone, you know, because all these condos are coming in now, and, you know, people are just and tripling the rents. the rents. Like, there's yeah. this great restaurant. I, you, you live on Upper East Side, but there's this great restaurant, Gabo. And it closed because mm -hmm. what was her rent now? I think it was like forty thousand a month. Forty thousand dollars a month. Yeah. How can somebody like make a? How can a restaurant yeah. make a living? Yeah. You know, I mean, so how can a club? And so then there's all this like pay to play, like, like a lot of these places get bookers. And they say, well, you have to bring, you have to bring, you know, thirty people. And if you don't bring thirty people, you're never gonna. And they have to be people willing and able to spend a certain amount of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pay all, all over again, in a sense. Yes. And sometimes yeah. you sometimes you bring that amount of people, and sometimes you don't. Right. But it's it's it, it's hard if you're playing out all the time in the same area. It's hard to keep bringing a lot sure. of people. Sure, you have to be touring, going to other places, <coughs> have a hit, Excuse have me. a lot of support. So, yeah. um, and it's also you want new people. Yeah. you don't want to just bug your friends and right. friends and family. Right. Right. you know, right. and and you try to get new people, but you also are hoping that the club will try and get some people. And yeah. well, it used yeah. to be it used that to be they. they my mother was a singer, actress, dancer in the 40s. They would hire her. She never had to bring anyone. Yeah. They hired yeah. her. She would do her Rita Hayworth number. Yeah. And just patrons were out there who yeah. paid the cover yeah. charge, paid the drinks, you know? Well, I mean, it's almost like you're doing everything. You're writing the tunes, you're performing them, and you're bringing people in. So it's like, yeah. you know, if they could do one thing, which is just have people who hang out there. Well, who needs the, the club then? No, right. well, that's exactly you, you right. Kinda I mean, you kind of feel exploited and abused because yeah. you're just bringing people into their club. Can't you, <coughs> like several musicians, get together and start a club, a more reasonable Well, they do, they, there are people who do yeah. that. There's, um, what what's that, that place called that... Well, one thing we do course, is local we, correspondence. Yeah, we, we get them. together and we have like five bands on a on a, on a bill, so we all bring our people. Yeah. So we're expanding our audience that way. Yeah, that's great. Um, but it's just like you could basically, as long as you bring fifty people and they buy drinks, you get years the ago. I heard the Ramones yeah. in nineteen seventy five. Yeah. I was I'd love yeah. to hear Ramones. Oh, oh they were awesome. and they were great people too. They were very nice people. Uh, yeah. uh, I heard them in a tenement venue like you had to go up some stairs walk over oh my God. and it was like i don't know how, what the neighbors must have thought or maybe it was an abandoned building mm -hmm. but they played in a tenement theater mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and it was very nice and no <coughs> pressure to buy anything mm -hmm. no i mean we we um and i think it cost like five dollars to get oh, yeah. it well that's yeah. that's the thing it's like we played the pyramid club recently which is awesome because I, I love that exists. place. I know. It's, it's, it's there, a yeah. landmark. Yeah. That's why. It's great. Yeah, has it been landmarked? Yeah. Yes, I think yeah. it has. Oh my I know. God. I love we, that we place. We used to go for 80s night just to dance yeah. there. But so I used to go in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Talk about it. That was really 80s <laughs> night. Yeah. And now they're bringing back live music. Yeah. So you know, like, RuPaul used to work there. Wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Well, I mean, there is some... Nirvana played one of their first shows. Just oh, my God. So you know, I really hurt when Kurt Cobain killed himself. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe it. I love that song. Rape me. Oh you my god, I yeah. love this song. Yes. Too. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, he's uh, it's just so sad, and it's, they're doing a great documentary on him, especially on HBO. Yeah. Um, 
May 4th or something. Well, it might have aired. The show might have aired <laughs> after. Yeah, that's yes. true. But, um, Do you think there was any foul play there? Uh, I don't know. I think he... I think he probably was very high strung and depressed mm -hmm. and just probably it got to be too much for yeah. him. Yeah. It's yeah. very sad because you, you you listen to her songs, you watch her performances, and you're like, Wow, they were amazing. Yeah. But I mean it was it was wonderful to play at Pyramid Club and that felt like your community and we played that gig in October. That's for CMJ. For CMJ, that yeah, was CMJ really great. Music Festival. Yeah, College that was really festival. great. Yeah. I mean it was just and where and do you see your career going? In five, ten years. Uh, we're hoping pretty far. <laughs> we're hoping to get um, some licensing. I mean, I know yeah. it's like too much music business yeah. talk, but I'd like to, that's the next step that I, I would like to get placement in films. Even if yeah. it's like an independent mm -hmm. film, I, I don't care if we get paid for yeah. it. Yeah, or I a, just, a theme song on a yeah. television yeah. show. That would be amazing. Yeah. Netflix, are you listening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that would be amazing. I mean, yeah. because that's where you can actually, you know, get some nor notoriety, you and know, some traction, yeah. and some traction. We were yeah. just put on a compilation for South by Southwest, um, mm -hmm. and that was distributed out there to industry people and to people going. Um, and we were voted like number ten in New York for indie bands. So great, Deli that is fantastic. Deli magazine, yeah. Deli magazine. So it's great. Mean, that was next to like what MGMT. magazine? Deli, Deli magazine. magazine. That is absolutely fantastic. I, I mean, and there was like Luscious Jackson, MGMT, uh, I mean, Vampire crazy. Weekend, because uh, we're it's just us, Rufus Wainwright, you know? yeah. It wasn't always just us. We've had yeah. we've had a full band, um, but people graduate from the band. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, graduate. that's fine. They always graduate. Yeah, yeah. they always graduate. Like they always people matriculate. Have lives. I mean, I would say if you can actually stick together as a band, yeah. you might actually make it. Because, yeah. I mean, that's the hardest thing. It's like or you might go out. the way of Kurt Cobain. Or you might go the way yeah. of Kurt Cobain, yeah. 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 But, I mean, we're happy people. So, so we're, yeah, yeah, yeah we're happy way, people. I mean. So Well, no, I, I, he would if he yeah. were like... A policeman, he would have killed himself. You can't say yeah, he had music problems. killed him. Yeah, yeah. he was depressed. Yeah. I, mean. I mean, you know, it's it's what it is too. It just shows that people don't don't support mental illness in this country. Like, well, there, especially there's in the business. I no, yeah, but I mean, but there's also, no. They yeah. might think, well, let's not mess with him because exactly. that might be what's making him Kurt Cobain. So leave oh, him alone. And Jim Morrison, a lot of people knew he. Yeah. Drunk and they didn't do anything because they like. Well, same thing with Amy, Amy Winehouse. Oh, up. that was bru I oh I hurt so much for her. Mm -hmm. That poor girl was in so much trouble. <sighs> Amy Winehouse, mm -hmm. and nobody gave a damn. They no. just squeezed her dry, took all the music, exactly. and she died. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, my it might change how she sings. Who cares? She's Let's keep her won. alive. Yeah. I mean, it was like she has this song. Uh, they told me to go to rehab. Whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I said no, no, no. Well, you should have said yes. Somebody should have picked her up and said, mm -hmm. you are in rehab, whether you. Wish to be or not. That's right. I know. It just, right. I don't know. It's just, it's yeah. very sad, you know. So that, but you know, in life, like a lot of people, it's not just. I think in music, it's more heightened that you see people take their own lives or get really involved. In well, at least we know about it. it. Yeah. We don't know mm -hmm. if a it's secretary like, kills herself. Yeah. But and her family will say heart attack. Yeah. But if right. Kurt Cobain yeah. does it, everyone says, "Oh my God." Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. talking about music, let's do some. Okay. Let's do some. Let's drink a little water. We know it's Southern mm -hmm. Comfort. Oh yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would never be able to perform. Mm. <laughs> Alright, Mark, we're gonna It's not Southern <laughs> Comfort, I'm kidding. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, so this is um a song that's from our gonna be fun come our from yep. our third album, Fancy Upcoming. Hercules. Mm -hmm. And um hope you like it. <laughs> It's a new song, so and it's called Fancy Hercules. It's called Fancy Hercules. So this is a oh. title track. A title track. Yeah. Thank you. My speech, <laughs> my speech is getting in the way of itself. All right, ready. <laughs> Thank 
killed your sick son by stabbing him in the back. Now you're under the train is gonna come. Never get your sanity back. Never get your sanity back. Never get your sanity back. Fabulous. <laughs> that was Makar. And they are great. Do you have anything else you'd like to do for us? We could do, um, should we, should we do? Would you like to hear, you want to hear one more song? Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do, um, Let's do Love and Confusion. Okay. Huh? Could do love. a song called Love and Confusion. Sounds great. Love yeah. and Confusion. You'd rather, that's what you'd said something about that? Oh, oh okay. So I was listening to Al Green's song, Al Green's song Love and Happiness, and this has is inspired by this but has absolutely <laughs> no <laughs> relation so to do it. do not sue these <laughs> people. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound anything like it. So, but... but that, where's that, Mark Bronson when you need him? <laughs> 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 anyway, all right. So let's try this. Yeah, let's okay. Try. Again, another new song. So let's see what happens. Okay. Ready, Mary? Mm hmm Starts with G, right? Yes, <laughs> it does. Okay. <laughs> Can we do this again? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No? No. Okay. We're almost through. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's do I'm Glad instead. Very good. Sorry. Oh, we're doing I a whole new song called I'm Glad. Yeah, right. I get too nervous. I Don't really, get nervous. I get Everybody really... Everybody loves you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this one. All right. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Strasburg said, if you're not nervous, quit. <laughs> <laughs> so
So, okay, let me find that camera. Oh, why am I looking this way? I, here, let me... <laughs> anyway, whatever. So, I seem to be looking up into the distance. But I like my eye makeup. I'm, uh, okay, <laughs> so, uh, well, that's great. And uh, do you have any... Uh, if people want to contact you or um, find out more about your music, how can they do that? They can go to macarmusic.com. Macarmusic.com, and that will also, uh, your albums are available there. Yes, yes everything's yeah. free. And everything is free. Yes, yes. that might be part of the right reason why we don't make any money yet. But you can download everything that's for free. That's the Indie Yeah. yeah. Good otherwise, for you can't get people to listen. Yeah. I think that's absolutely yeah. great, and you can see how good they are. So, And their music is free. <laughs> Macar, what's the thing again? Macarmusic.com. Macarmusic.com. My guest has been, obviously, Macar. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Composed of Andrea De Angelis and Mark Purnell. <laughs> Mark's the boy. Andrea's the girl. <laughs> On this show, we have to clear that up with every guest. But anyway, we don't do crotch checks on this show. <laughs> but uh, unless they ask, you know, I mean, if it's appropriate. Anyway, <laughs> my name is Diana Monfort, and our wonderful director has been Mr. Ryan Stillwagon. Stillwagon after all these years. All right, yeah. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> play us out. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I love you. Even if nobody else loves you, I love you. So screw everybody else. I right? love you. How's that for arrogance? I love you. That's all the talk. <laughs> well, love you a lot. See you next time. And now we're going to listen to Makar playing us out. Mm. Then never? Don't let a dream. Oh, okay. Shoot. Okay. One minute. Okay. All right. We're going to sing about the devil. This is a song called Devil in a Dream. <coughs> devil in a Dream. Devil in a dream Don't mean a goddamn thing Don't mean a goddamn thing